Trento here with the United West, giving you insight into how we unravel the complexities of the Middle East. Well, finally, for the first time on national TV, such as YouTube is, the secret behind my brilliance can be fully revealed. And folks, what is that secret? It's very simple. I read every single word that Daniel Greenfield, Shulman Journalism Fellow over at David Horowitz's Freedom Center writes. Daniel Greenfield is one of the most profound, eloquent, insightful journalists alive today. Stay tuned for our micro series where we present one of Daniel's articles and expound upon it just a little bit. And be sure to go read his blog, Sultan Kanish. American Taliban sues prison for violating Islam by making him wear long pants. A blog by Daniel Greenfield. There was a time when traitors were hung quickly. That time was World War II. John Walker Lind, the American Taliban, was instead sent to prison. There he developed a full-time hobby of waging lawfare jihad against the United States with the aid of a professional organization that works on behalf of enemies of the United States. Not Al-Qaeda, the ACLU. Last year, he sued and won over prayers to Allah, the Muslim deity that inspired him to join the Taliban. Now he's run out of things to sue and he and the ACLU are suing because his pants are too long and Muslims are not allowed to wear long pants. Terre Haute, Indiana, from the Courthouse News Service. A Muslim inmate filed a class action against the Federal Bureau of Prisons, claiming that Islam prohibits Muslim men from wearing pants below their ankles, but his prison prohibits him from hemming pants above the ankles. Yahya John Lind sued the directors of the Federal Bureau of Prisons and the warden of the Terre Haute Federal Pen in federal court. The lawsuit states, quote, Yahya Lind is Muslim, and it is a clear tenet of Islam that Muslim men are prohibited from wearing pants below their ankles. Despite this, it is a formal policy of the director of the Federal Bureau of Prisons that Islamic inmates may not hem or wear their pants above the ankle. This policy imposes a substantial and unjustified burden on the religious exercise of Mr. Lind and all Muslim prisoners with the Federal Bureau of Prisons and violates the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Lind also objects to the strip search policy imposed for visits. He seeks an injunction and costs. He is represented by Kenneth Falk and by Gavin Rose with the ACLU in Indianapolis. Just to be clear, a traitor and enemy is suing the Prisons Bureau because the length of his pants imposes a substantial burden on the exercise of the religion that caused him to turn traitor? When a Clinton or Obama judge hands him this one, along with court costs, he'll sue because the fleas aren't halal or his beard isn't long enough. Anything to continue causing harm to the United States. Incidentally, the quote clear tenet of Islam doesn't involve pants, but a robe. Muhammad claimed having a long robe was quote arrogant. None of this applies to pants or a mandatory prison uniform. However, the pants length is considered to be one of those things that separates, quote, moderate Muslims from, quote, extremists. Not so much the terrorism as the pants length. So, if your pants are too long, you might go to hell. The prophet said, The dress that is under the ankle is in the hellfire. From Al-Bukhari, number 5787. Islam. It's a religion whose prophet raped a little girl and had verses put into his head by the devil. But if you wear your pants too long, you will go to hell. Sure, that's crazy. But we're being sued by an enemy combatant for not letting him wear short pants. And we're letting this play out instead of tossing him back into the waterlogged hole full of rats he came from.